This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control and today is going to be a little bit of a different type of video, one that I usually don't do and I don't know why I haven't done one yet, but it's going to be about bed bugs and it's going to be about what not to do with crossfire. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to the channel. I really do appreciate all of the uh, people coming and viewing my videos and commenting and liking and visiting on me on my live streams. That's been great. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I live stream every Thursday night. So come by, say hi, and uh, ask any questions. If you have pest control questions, I'm always there, uh, available. I try to make myself available. I've got over 30 years of experience in the pest control industry, and I have a lot of knowledge, and I just want to share. So uh, hopefully I'll see you there. But anyway... Let's get back on this video. Um, due to recent comments that I've been getting, both privately and in my comment section of my YouTube channel, um, I wanted to go over some things that you really should not be doing with Crossfire. If you're, yeah. so Crossfire, for those that don't know, is number one best pesticide for bed bug elimination that the industry has to offer. It is fantastic. Uh, a lot of pest control technicians are moving to using Crossfire more than ever before um, because it is so effective. It is unbelievably effective to get rid of bed bugs. Um, more effective than heat treatments, more effective than freeze treatments, more effective than really any pesticide out there. Uh, maybe even more effective than Apprehend, but that's questionable because Apprehend is a pretty good chemical too. Um, but Crossfire is something that you can buy yourself. You can get it on Amazon. I've got links below on Do Your Own Pest Control and all the different websites that I, you know, that I endorse. And I tell people, hey, go there and buy it. You know, get price compare and get the cheapest price. And so I've got those links below if you're interested. I also have an Amazon store page where you can go and find all the pesticides that I mention here on my channel. A really easy, comprehensive, you know, location because people were like, well, where can I get this stuff? Where can I find Crossfire? Where can I find Demon? Where can I find, you know, all the pesticides I use? And so I've got them listed there if you're interested. But um, I get a lot of comments, um, both through my Facebook page, through my Google listing, through my YouTube comment section, uh, <coughs> comments everywhere about, you know, uh, I, and, and, the, and what spurned this specific video, this, this video, is a comment I received yesterday. So I had a lady that was contacting me yesterday. She's, she's found bed bugs about a week or so ago. And she's really concerned about uh, the bed bugs. She, she doesn't like that they're on her son's bed. They're biting him, causing him all kinds of dis discomfort. And it's bothering her. Because, I mean, she's the mother, you know, she's, she wants to protect her child. This is a normal, normal behavior for mothers. And so uh, she's really concerned. She wants to take care of her baby. And she, she bought Crossfire because she watched my videos. So she bought some Crossfire and she's been applying it. She's applied it four times in the last week. All right. That's one. Number one, don't apply Crossfire once a day or... You know, because the bed bugs don't die when the pesticide is dry. All right, that's not actually true, but this is what a lot of people believe. So, what happens when Crossfire is sprayed on a bed bug? It's usually die dead within five minutes, sometimes less than five minutes. But it's called, you know, it, it typically does kill the bed bug within five minutes. Even the label says this. So, people spray it, and it kills the bed bugs, and they find a lot of dead bed bugs, which is fantastic. But then they notice after it's dried, it's not killing them anymore. But it is. When a bed bug crawls through a residual pesticide, whether it's crossfire or anything, you know, any kind of pesticide, if it's dry, it takes a while for the bug to die. It could take two to four hours for a bed bug to die after it's crawled through crossfire uh, once it's first applied. Maybe less, maybe an hour, maybe 30 minutes. 
the point is is that you're not going to see the same effect that the pesticide is having on the bug as, as far as like an instant kill. It's not going to kill them instantly when it's dry. It's going to take several minutes to even a couple of hours for the bug to die. And I mean, in fact, if you, if you take a bed bug, all right, treat your bed, find a bed bug crawling across the surface and you know, okay, I treated that surface. You take that bed bug and you put it in a baby jar or like a jar, an empty jar or something. It'll die in there. It'll die in there. You'll come back tomorrow and it'll be dead. And the point is, is that the pesticide is still killing the bugs. It just takes longer than you expect for the bug to die. So I really want to address this because this is the most, probably the most common thing that people tell me is I've been spraying it every day or I've been spraying it once a week or I've been spraying it once every three or four days and it's not it doesn't work that way. It doesn't kill. It's not like a bottle of Raid that you just psh, and you're dead. It, it doesn't work that way. It's a residual. The reason Crossfire is such an effective pesticide and, because, and why so many people in the industry are moving towards it is because it has a 30-day residual. The only other pesticides really we were using prior to Crossfire were things like Temperate. And Temperate, you have to reapply every like seven to 10 days. So, so you're having to go and do three to four times the amount of work to get rid of the same problem with crossfire you only apply once a month and it gets rid of the problem so in fact i want to say state right here that almost all of my bed bug customers almost all i do have a few that i have to retreat only need one treatment with crossfire to get rid of their bed bug problem it's like a one and done fantastic pesticide now on extreme cases where the bed bugs are just really bad and people have been dealing with them for several years you know it may take longer to get rid of them just because there's so many of them you're waiting for them all to come out and die so number one don't treat all the time once a month is really all you need to do with crossfire all right two <coughs> don't over mix or under mix the pesticide so one of the problems with pest with crossfire is that people will mix it well predominantly either under mix it usually so for those that don't know crossfire comes in a little 13 ounce bottle now you can buy a gallon of crossfire but i don't recommend it because most people if they're just going to kill bed bugs on their own house they only need a 13 ounce bottle but the problem with crossfire is on the label it states not to try to try to use it all within the first 24 hours of mixing and the reason this is is because crossfire will separate from the water and it becomes like a gooey gelatinous mess and it doesn't work as effectively anymore once once it turns into that messy stuff and so you're not going to be able to get it to apply it's not going to work properly and it's just pretty much waste at that point so what people are doing is they're taking the crossfire in a 13 ounce bottle and they're trying to measure out exactly six and a half ounces to you know a half gallon of water and that's and that's really difficult to do and so uh, what I usually recommend is trying to you know I mean yeah you can mix it half it's really hard to get your ratio properly you're gonna either get way too more or you're either gonna uh, way too much or you're gonna mix it way too less and if it's too much crossfire it won't work and if it's too less crossfire it won't work it's chemistry class and so uh, you'll get more you know you'll get more destruction so to speak if it's stronger but you don't want to mix it stronger that's against the label you don't want to mix it weaker that's against the label follow the label always follow the label the label is the law and if you have to buy a couple of extra you know little 13 ounce bottles then do that or buy the gallon and keep it on on uh, so you have it you know the thing is a gallon of crossfire is really expensive you know you spend two to three hundred dollars for a gallon of crossfire but it's it's there you know, the point is, is it's there, it's cheaper overall per ounce to get it in a gallon. And then you have it. And then if for some reason, because people typically are prone to bed bugs. One person that gets bed bugs, you know, their sister might have them and they're getting them. Or their, their uncle might have them and they get them. And so the bed bugs are going to travel back maybe. Maybe you'll get them again, but then you'll already have the crossfire there. Because as long as it's not mixed with water, it stays good for a long time. Just keep it in a cool dark place and the crossfire will last you know as long as it's not mixed it'll last for a long time so I recommend doing it that way because then you can get a more accurate measure pour because it's a tip and pour 
jug and so you kind of pour it and you look in it and you pour it and you look and you get the right exact right amount of ounces that you need to mix that you know whatever volume you're going to mix because that's what I use so a lot of times when I'm going into a house I mix I mean I actually mix right in the driveway of the of the house I'm going to service it's real common to do that in fact my son who's sitting right here he uh he's the one who usually mixes the, the pesticide and you know it makes it easy I'm like hey just mix a half a gallon okay six and a half ounces of crossfire and so he does that he knows how to do that it's real easy to, to mix it with that jug and so I recommend using that rather than just if you're gonna try to divide that 13 ounce bottle it's really you don't want to use uh, cooking utensils to try to divide crossfire because once you put pesticide on your cooking utensils you don't want to use your cooking utensils for cooking anymore you know that's the thing you got to realize that you're going to ruin your, your, your personal belongings with the crossfire, and then you won't be able to use them for what you normally use them for. So don't overmix. Don't undermix. Always follow your label. And this is a third rule, and this is the final rule. If I think of any more, I'll make another video, make a part two to this video. But don't spray yourself, your pets, your children with crossfire. I should not have to say this. I shouldn't have to say this. Don't treat yourself with pesticides. Pesticides, even though the label of Crossfire is relatively, I mean, you read the label, it's relatively safe to use around mammals, pets, children. Um, but that doesn't mean you can spray yourself. It doesn't, you can't spray yourself or your pets. In fact, it says right on the label not to do it. And the label is the law. So if you're following the label of Crossfire and you're doing what you're supposed to do, you're not going to spray yourself, and you're not going to spray your kids. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm laughing, but it, I, I really don't understand why I have to tell you guys not to spray yourself with pesticide because it's an obvious don't do it kind of thing. You don't want to make yourself sick. I mean, there is always the possibility. It's a chemical. It's a pesticide. Don't spray yourself with it. You know, you wouldn't coat yourself in bleach. You wouldn't, you wouldn't spray yourself with, you know, ammonia. You wouldn't, you know, th these are things you just don't do. You just don't put chemicals all over your body, no matter what they're for. I know the bed bugs are driving you crazy, and you don't want to get eaten up anymore. And here I am promoting a pesticide on my channel. You know, and I talk real good. I talk real high about Crossfire. I mean, I should be on the payroll with MGK as much Crossfire as I sell through my Amazon page and through talking with you guys on YouTube. But I'm just telling you the honest truth. This is what I use. They don't pay me anything. Just so you know, I don't make any money from MGK. They don't, they don't, they don't, I'm not a salesman for MGK. I don't work for them, but I love their products. I've been using Samari lately for ants, and that stuff's amazing. So, you know, it's, it, I like their products. They make good chemicals, but, you know, don't spray yourself with them, please. Don't, don't, don't treat yourself. Don't, don't rub it on your body. You know, it's not good for you. It's not something you're supposed to do. Don't ever spray yourself with pesticide. Don't rub it all over your sheets. Don't put it in your comforters. Don't put it on your clothes. You know, people were telling me they're spraying their clothes with Crossfire. They're spraying their covers, their sheets, and their blankets. Don't do that, all right? You can wash the bed bugs off of your clothes. You can wash them off of your bed sheets and your linens. You don't need to spray your sheets. In fact, it says right on the label not to spray your clothes or your sheets or your covers. Take that stuff off of the bed. Then treat your mattress and your box spray and your headboard and your footboard and your bed rails. Don't spray your closet clothes. Don't spray the stuff hanging in the closet. If you're worried the bed bugs might be in your clothes, take them to the laundromat and wash them. That's gonna kill the bed bugs. You know, high heat on your uh, washing water and high heat on your dryer, and that will absolutely kill the bed bugs dead. And you'll actually find them dead in the lint trap. In fact, I recommend that people uh, dry their laundry before they wash it. And the reason being is because if the bed bugs really are in your laundry, you'll find them in the lint trap. They'll be dead in there. So there's a tip for you. Hopefully this video has been informative, mildly entertaining. I'm really serious. I know I'm laughing at some of these, but I just didn't think I would have to come on and make a video like this. I don't want you to over apply or under apply or spray it places you don't need to spray it or over mix it or under mix it or, you know, I just, I want everybody to get rid of their bed bugs, but I want them to do it safe. Don't forget, 
live streams every Thursday night. Come and visit me and talk to me, and I'll tell you some of my crazy stories for pest control. You guys have a really great day, great night, whatever, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I hope you're enjoying life to the fullest. Y'all have a great day. I really appreciate it. And like the video, give me a thumbs up like that. Just click it down there. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Y'all have a real great day. I appreciate it. And I'll be seeing you. Thank you.